Greetings everyone, the Zany Zenith Adventure continues in AI War 2, and our recently completed hack for turrets has caused a small exo strike force to appear. We're about to get by our first wave here in Malignus as well, so I wanted to take a look at all of that. Meanwhile, they continue building the Dark Zenith Fakari do. They're beginning to get some strike craft up in here. Things are looking pretty good. Here we go. So this one comes from the Praetorian AI. And a lot of them not bothered by our tractor beams. But our fleet is here and we're going to clean them up anyway. There we go. And you can see turning into some zombies, the subverter turrets doing their work in all of that. So, I did some thinking about what I want to do with these fleets. I actually don't want either one of them. This one would be not really good to have. And then maybe we want to take the territory to let this car expand more. But there's a magnifier here that we need to take out. That's more AI progress. This one would be nice to have. Decent, I guess. But also troop accelerator here. Again, that's some more AI progress we're going to have to eat. Or the hacking to get rid of it. Either one. So I just don't want to go either one of those routes yet. And I decided to do something else. I don't normally go for ARS this early in the game, but we can get more room for our Svakari to grow. And there are some nice ship lines here. So I think, you know, taking this and then seeing what else gets scouted, probably the best option for us. So we're just going to hop in here with both of our fleets, the combat fleet and the support fleet, allow all of our turrets to handle their business elsewhere and see what shows up so here we've got some burlesque warriors and they have vampirism so let's go ahead and focus down one at a time there goes another one part of the jabberwock's wonderful contribution and you can see we're also getting some of our spikari now coming in to help They've already reached the point where not a great amount of assistance, but they're providing some. Anybody that wants to flee can go ahead. There we go. And what do we want to build in here? All of the you know, wormholes are basically on this side of the system. So I'm just going to drop a logistical on the other side. And once that comes up, We'll hack for at least one more ship line. And we've got seven strength worth of our allies just sort of hanging out here. Go get all my metal harvesters up so that we can set up our defenses in here. Secure the system. And now they're warping in a terminus and another terminus. There we go. Should be good. Force fields, pikes, and subverters, of course, as before. I think we can just barely get away with using you know, one vector. They'll be able to hit whatever comes in through these systems. So perhaps we will just you know, toss one of the gravity generators in each direction. We'll need to split up the tractors, of course. We'll throw in some tachyons. And we'll call it good. So let's go ahead and hack this ARS now. 12 hacking points. And you know we have some pulsars already. I really like the mine layer frigates. So I'm going to grab them. A gravic pod's also worth considering. Really good against high energy ships. But 
we're going to go with this. Another Exo Strike. Got some more tech coming in. I'm just going to save this for now. But we're looking pretty good on energy. And, you know, our fleet up a little bit stronger now to almost 50 strength. Let's see what else is out there. It's out this direction. Really nothing that interesting. There's a fleet over here. Distribution node and this fleet has got a raid engine, so that's a negative. Pulsar tanks and MLRS Corvettes. That's an okay one. MLRS Corvettes used to suck, but they're a lot better now. Because they have a bonus against strike craft damage. This is nice. We've got a... Ooh, I like this fleet. Mine layer frigates. Snipers aren't great, but I do like having long range ships. And Warbird frigates are always pretty good. And then the power generator, where is that? right in the middle of the system so we'd have to defend against both directions but i really think zenith power generators are overpowered right now even with a higher ai progress game i'm still going to want to get this i think nine hundred thousand energy that is nice and then we have let's see over here there's a citadel paralysis citadel and zenith matter converter so both of those in one system, that's definitely worth considering. Where's the matter converter at? It's up here. So we would need to probably control Grell Aurelia. And there's a major data center here. Where is that? It's right by the Nomad entrance, but these are the only other two entrances in here. We would have to deal with this fortress. That shouldn't be a problem. But this is actually, I think, a really good opportunity to use the Nomad connections. By which I mean, if I hop through here, here, and here, then I can reach a system that I actually can't reach any other way. We're actually not connected to it any way but through the Nomad. And this is not a particularly strong Nomad world. It's Mark III. And then we could grab this and get some more scouting out. I like that idea. I think that's how I want to go about this. So let's load up everybody in here. There we go. And let's hop first of all into this world. And none of these are that strong, so I just should just be able to pop through them. We got some zombies in here. Yeah, let's not hang out in here. Let's just head back into the nomad world. And then you come with as well. Let the zombies and Sfikari just fight away. We're just going to keep going. And I do like the idea of knocking out everything in this nomad world. Because as this floats around, I would like for it not to be reinforcing as it gets near one of my planets. As long as we're going through this planet anyway. To see the cool blue ring effects there. Let's get rid of everything in this area. And so I'm just I'm trying to hit targets of opportunity and then gradually learn more about the galaxy here is my basic approach. So we're gonna hop into our target here. But we're not going to want to be on pursuit in this part. Let's go ahead and just hang out. Alright, let's go after the fortress. And we'll worry about everything else. Yeah, we've got enough strength in here. This should be fine. We just want to knock out the fortress. And it's gone. Now everybody go on pursuit. Eliminate all customers in the vicinity. Looking pretty good. We've got a Sebo here. Bunch of Tachyons. Make them all go away. 
Excellent. If we need to, I'll convert this to a military later. But I'm going to stick it as logistics now, right on top of our MDC. As I typically do. And once again, let's get the basics in place. I'll be a little more careful here, though, and put up the force fields right away. I do think I'll use all three. Let's have all three force fields on top of this, just to have a little bit more protection. What do we have going on here? Okay. We have some fun showing up here, and I'm not entirely certain we're going to be able to fight them off. Let's see how this battle goes. We're converting some of them. They might knock out this Terminus, but I think, think I like what we're doing here. So they are starting to hit us with some uh, decent side waves. Not too big yet. We're at 70 AI progress, but we don't have the reduction kicking in yet from our major data center. So once that happens, we'll be in much better shape. And of course, this is not an expansion that's really gonna help our Fikari, at least not yet. Because they aren't connected to this system. So, nice thing about this is we can just basically focus on this over here. We have to worry about the nomads, but they're not going to be a problem for too long because that planet will move on. So let's just throw all of these up. And tractors up about there. Tachyons per usual. Okay, I probably want to hang out here with my fleet until they are gone. They're, they're going to hit us with another another wave over there, though. I should probably go back there and help. That's what I'll do. I'll be ready to jump back in here if I need it. We don't really have a big enough fleet to really split up just yet. So this is... Got to be a little careful with this. Let's go ahead and hop you... All the way back. And let's see. I've got a minor data center here. So that would be nice to be able to hit that pretty quickly. Another fleet over here. Should be a decent one. So now we're getting more options. We've got... Uh, oh, Void Home. I think we're probably going to want that. And then here... I may just want to take all three of these. We'll have to wait and see. All right, let's get back over here. And this is almost gone, but not quite. Are we going to be able to save it? I think we're just going to make it. Let's just hang out here until... They're all cleared out. And here comes our next wave. They're going to come from the other direction. And of course, you know, when they have targets of the Terminus, etc. in here, it's going to put more pressure on our defensive fleeting. Come on, take them out before they kill it. Maybe. Because they're not running into where our turrets are. I may potentially want to eventually move my command station. It all depends on how this plays out. Moving forward a few minutes, we did get hit with another wave here in Malignus. Actually did knock out one Terminus. Eventually cleared it out. And it's worth looking at these guys. You can see like the little wave type things. And they're in that solo phase state where they're basically paralyzed but can't be shot either. So you kind of have to just sit here and wait. And they kind of go back and forth out of it. So you can shoot them every little bit, and we're eventually going to wipe them out. But those are kind of annoying in that way. That, of course, is one of the Zenith ships that they hit us with. But I do want to try to bolster our defenses for this Fikari, and I actually had already done that ahead of this. It just wasn't quite enough. Optimally, I'd like to have a defensive fleet. 
just moving around to the different areas of Sfikari space. But what I did do is I put up some counter sniper and interceptor turrets from our battle stations. And I also put some of those in here. And I brought some, just finished the job over here and we actually have the battle stations headed back. But to help bolster our defense against the major data center. Just to make sure that we don't lose that. And I kind of have two priorities to deal with at the moment. I want to increase my fleet. I also want to clear out some more of the neighboring systems around and maybe even grab another system or two so that we can expand the Sfakari resources and build them up more. But I've decided I want to go after increasing my fleet first. So that's what we're going to do. I want to hop through here. One of the reasons for doing it this way, I want to be able to hack this tech vault, boost our turrets, take a look at what's in this outguard, and then grab this, get some extra energy. We can put up more turrets that way grab this fleet. I think we'll then we'll have a better base to operate from. So I'm going to hop right down here into Dinsdale with everything I have. Very good, sir. And since I'm coming in here anyway, I do want to clear out this system completely. Because then Sfikari can expand some in that way. And there's some, we got some Warden fleet in here, we got some Hunter. So we're starting to see a bit of the AI Special Forces, not a huge amount. But it's definitely happening. Chase them all away. Get them out of here. Just keeping everybody on pursuit. Go hunt down whatever is in the way and eliminate it. And you can see the you know the threat. It's not oppressive by any stretch, but it's continuing to increase. few strength of Sfikari, a couple dozen ships, and hopefully they will help us out. Okay, so now let's pop into Westos. I'm going to be a little more careful in there, however. Let's just hang out here. And how are battle stations coming? They're here. Let's move them in as well. we have over here yes it's our good friend the attractive matrix fortress isn't that fun so I'm gonna want some help for some turrets and beachheading which is why I'm bringing the battle stations in here they come they're not quite there yet pretty even strength wise in there so now that they're and let's move in our support fleet and let's see what we can throw up here if we have any of our long-range ships left we do have the counter snipers. Let's throw them up. Could throw up the snipers as well. Anything I put within 8,000 range of this isn't going to do me much good, so I'd like to have things with range of greater than that. You know what? I'll just put up the best steel. And let's see. Let's have them maybe around here. Yes, let's go and do that. Let's move our fleet up to that area. It's going to take a while to get all this built, of course. But time we have. And I want to just go around and basically knock out everything else. Fire guard post. You don't say. Okay. Now we're really not going to be able to do much against any of these turrets because they'll just get reflected at the attractive matrix. So I think it's just time to throw everything we've got at this. It's not going to be a very efficient fight.
but a lot better than it would have been if I was just doing it with my ships. Okay, so now let's get rid of all of you because you are no longer needed. Thank you very much for your help. Please go away. Alright, let's hack and get better turrets so that we can boost. And this is going to be the most efficient science-wise because it costs us 7,500 science if we didn't hack for it. The other items there are not as expensive. But that, of course, will also boost our defenses everywhere. With no corresponding increase in energy. This is a bit of a longer hack, not quite immediate like some of the others. Some of the shot line artifacts hanging out, that is a visual bug, but you can just tab in and out and it'll get rid of it. Okay. So our turrets are now stronger, and we're going to hit with a wave here, but we should have no problem repelling that. This is doing fine. So our defense is plenty sufficient for the moment. Now the outguard. There's a couple of interesting ones here. Uh, the void callers, and there's a big explanation here, but basically they produce a gravitational rift, keep anybody from leaving, the planet for a minute and will suck in a bunch of ships and crush them almost sort of like a mini black hole i don't think i'm gonna have it can be used on any planet that'd be a good way to do a basically a preemptive attack when there's a massed force somewhere i don't think i want these yet i don't think i have any attack battles that are going to be that challenging yet which means i don't really want to spend the ai progress but i'm seriously considering getting these later then Demeter's Cornucopia, this is basically a metal boosting outguard. Again, I don't think I'm going to want to need that. I don't think I would ever want to spend uh, 10 AI progress to get a metal boosting outguard. But it's there as an option. So I'm thinking later, possibly get the Void Callers. Not yet. We're actually just going to skip that outguard beacon for the moment. And we're going to hop right into Smooth and Rough. And in here, you can see that's a fair amount of strength. Let's go ahead and take a more restrained approach to our fleet. Oh, hello. Yeah, let's get rid of Mr. Concussion Guardian. Spawning a Phoenix against Zenith Architrave, you don't say. And we did have some more journals. Let's take a look at those. So, you know, I ran out of metal, so they're letting you know different ways you can upgrade your metal. ARS, Praetorian Guard, they give you a recommendation on capturing a flagship. And the next steps journal here, I actually was given the opportunity to write this, so if you like that one, great. If you don't, it's my fault. And then the Dark Spire, first detected. Letting us know that we have seen the Dark Spire, and they're actually on the other side of the galaxy right over here no threat to us in the near future but of course they will gradually expand as they do okay so this is our first vengeful system and i do want to i think i may not need them now nah, we've, we, we've got enough there isn't enough of their strength left let's not bother with turrets let's just go after everybody AI wishes to avenge its polarized guard post. So again, various different new types of guard posts that we're running into. Unarmed guard post will have its revenge from beyond the grave. The unarmed guard post sends its regards. There we go. I think the most amusing one to me is when it says 
From Hell's Dark Heart, the unarmed guard post stabs at thee. That's one of my favorite lines in the game. But... We didn't get that one this time. In any case, the Vengeful is down. We need to knock out this guard post, claim our energy and our fleet. Cool. Now, let's see, over here, this is just an empty Mark IV system. Okay. So how do we want to try to defend this? I think we want to put up turrets in one direction then maybe put up some battle station turrets the other one. I think that would work out pretty well for us. So what I'm going to do is... That's sort of a defensive beachhead instead of an offensive beachhead idea. I'm going to put logistical command here. And we're going to aim that this way. Usual waiting period for everything to assemble itself. Spawning a phoenix against the Zenith Architrave. So the Architrave's really making the AI upset. And I'm going to wait for all of our metal. We are pretty high on it. So I think it's probably a good time now. They are letting us know that we have detected an architrave and found a home portal. So let's take a look what they say about these. Some new interesting zenith forms. Very territorial. Don't attack them unless you want to get into major war. Expeditionary force from a powerful zenith empire in another universe. Projecting force in this universe is very expensive, etc., etc., so they'll only do it to fight other Archetrives or defend or give themselves attempts to expand every now and then. When they're at peace, the ships that can't be stored inside their spawners will attrition over time so they can't afford to maintain them. So the main idea there is just, again, they're territorial. Leave them alone unless you're really itching for a fight. And here they are. There's an Archetrave right there. It's going to let us know about their home portal. We may be able to communicate them via hacking. Very uh, humorous there, uh, system name for that. But they use the portal to maintain their presence, and you can't destroy the portal, but you can hack it. Which we may consider doing. I don't think we want to do that yet, though. We're just going to kind of leave them be at the moment. And this is actually in a position, though. I may want to consider trying to prevent them from expanding. So if I cleared out this system and put some turrets in there, that could slow their expansion and then give us more access to hack them later. I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to angle my turrets more this way and then do the offensive beachhead in Yod Gimel. Okay, another fleet. So I think we've gone far enough. Let's go ahead and speed up our engineering now. Of course, getting engineering up to Mark III for the first two upgrades does allow you to have cloaked engineers, which can really help in some battle situations. We are also going to want maximum force fields in here. Protect all of our newfound energy. We don't have to be particularly careful about energy now because we are looking very good on all of that. Put about here. That should work. And then you. Did I transfer the ship yet? I don't think I did. Nope. We may want to switch up some fleets here, but I don't think I want to do that quite yet. 
So, you head back home. And then let's grab our battle stations. Please. There we are. And head over into Yad Gimel. You come with... There's enough force in there. We probably want to be cautious. And we will keep our support in this area. We should have enough to wear them down in here. Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah. We have a subjugator. <laughs> the Jabberwocks have a subjugator. <laughs> oh, glorious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> go blow yourself up, please. It's it's a wimpy subjugator, relatively speaking, but still, it's a subjugator. We are not even an hour into the game, and we're fighting a subjugator because... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I heard jerks. There it goes. And yes, we've lost enough to provoke a counterattack. Thankfully, that's going to be very temporary. Okay, so let's let's start building some turrets around this. I sort of want to park my shield wall battle station basically right on top of this. And let's throw up some Bastille. Take advantage of that shield. Maybe throw a little further out. Throw some subverters. And behind... I'll put 10 counter snipers. And we'll just see how that goes. Whether or not that's enough, or it's not enough, or what all happens there. Okay, let's go finish this system off. kind of turrets they have over there. They have, they have subverters and death grips. A couple of my least favorite kinds to deal with. Okie dokie. So. Going forward then between now and the next episode. We've secured a position at least for now if we can hold it close to the next Zenith Architrave. We'll try to constrain its response and at least make it Hopefully it'll decide to expand out the other way and continue giving us access to that portal. And then I think my next target is definitely to try and create more areas for our architrave, or our rather our Sfakari to expand. You see here in Dinsdale, they're, they're doing it. They're doing what I want them to do. They've got a couple of additional terminus here to bring in additional resources. They've got constructors going all over the place. They are definitely building up, and I want to make that happen in as many directions as possible. So I'll get that done off screen, and then we'll see what transpires after that. Thanks for watching. More Zany Zenith coming up soon.